Meat wad, ball of compressed meat. The burn is in your mind. And together we are Aqua Team Hunger Force. And Meat Wad was even sort of sadder and more like aware. He was more like some John Carpenter, the thing kind of <laughs> gross amalgamation. He was always saying things like, please, God, kill me. <laughs> <laughs> and, Hey everybody, how you doing? Corey here for another Double Toasted interview. And, you know, like I say, I'm here in the middle of the day. Not usually here in the middle of the day unless it's for somebody special. And this is someone who I have watched for years, years. The longevity on this guy is incredible. Uh, the name is Dave Willis. Now, if you don't know Dave Willis, the name, you definitely know his creations. Uh, you might have heard of Aqua Teen Hunger Force, Squid Billies, or even Your Pretty Face is Going to Hell. And... We have Dave Willis here today to talk about a new Aqua Teen Hunger Force movie that's coming out on video later this month. And Dave, how you doing, man? Hey, how are you? I'm Very doing... weird seeing my face. It's like I'm in a old school radio shack. <laughs> <laughs> filming, filming a camera, filming a TV, filming a camera, filming a TV, filming a TV, filming a TV. <laughs> Wow, we're taking it back to Radio Shack. Well, trust me, man, it's not going to look like Radio Shack, Computer USA, or anything else when we when we okay, actually yeah. air the interview. So have faith in me. But uh, <laughs> no, nah, man, I really appreciate you doing this. I, I'm, you know, I'm, people say this all the time, but I can truly say that uh, being a late night person and a big fan of Adult Swim, huge fan of Aqua Teen Hunger Force, and probably have seen every episode of the show cool. several times awesome. over. Awesome. That's uh, great. Cool. But Thanks for watching. Oh, no problem, man. Thank you for creating it. But you have a, a new Aqua Teen Hunger Force project that's coming out uh, this month. This, this is November right now. And um, it is uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force Plantasm. Uh, I want to, if, if it's okay, uh, we'll have you talk to us a little bit more about it. But is it all right if I show a little bit of a clip, uh, the trailer? Oh, for sure, yeah. Yeah, show the ending. Show, show okay. What? Well, no, hey, show look, the I, ending. No, no, no. I was already told Did by somebody. They give somebody, you the ending. Man, you try to get me in trouble. Somebody at Warner Brothers told me I could, I could barely even show the trailer, much less show the ending. So, <laughs> I'm, okay, I'm gonna go All ahead right. and show the tra a little bit of the trailer right now, and then we'll come back and have Dave tell us more about the project. I miss being part of a team. Y'all remember Aqua Team? Prylock is dead to me. I'll never speak with him again. You sure you're up for this, Phoenix? <laughs> I live on a for 15 years, man. This thing, Aqua Teen, we're in this for life. No one just walks away. We're back. You're welcome. Here at Amazing, we're all one big happy family. So let's roll up our sleeves and get down to business. So as you can see, you had the return of the sentient food mascots, Frylock, Master Shake, and Meatwad, who you do the voice for. And well, you want to tell us, oh, I'm sorry, and Carl also. That's right. What of it? <laughs> I'm going to tell you, man, I know everybody has their favorite characters, Uh Carl is my favorite character, man. I, I'm, when I'm around people, sometimes I do this thing of weedy wah, weedy weedy wah, and they're like, wait a minute, man, where did you get that from? Is that Carl? I'm like, yeah, sure is, man. Um, <laughs> you want to tell us more about the movie? Uh, yeah. I mean, we, we um, of course, it comes out Tuesday. Uh, we, Matt and I, uh, we get a call in the middle of the pandemic, and they were like, How'd you like to make an Aqua Team movie? And we were like, cool. <laughs> and it's been out in mothballs for like years, you know? So we were like, uh, uh, we just kind of hopped back into it. And it was just, you know, standard cliche. It was like riding a bike. It was, and we had all these sort of new ideas. And we were like, well, what, what, maybe we talked about the first movie, maybe being a little unwieldy and a little self-indulgent and you know kind of fan servicey and and uh, i think at the time he and i were making aqua team we were making squids we were making he was making 12 ounce mouse so it was it was a fun movie but it was kind of a mess and this one we were like let's make a tight structured you know 75 minute comedy in out 
uh, fast hits, do something special with it. And we made the whole movie during the uh, pandemic remotely, which was also another challenge. But, you know, it all worked out. We got all the all the old cast back. We got all our old editors and our animators, everybody that started with the show were were on the crew. So it's all the authentic, you know, Aqua Teen. And then it um, but yet it's kind of. It looks like we actually had a little money to animate it. <laughs> so there's that too. I mean, it looks great. I mean, we had some of our original animators, Craig Harton and Matt Jenkins worked on it, all our editors. So it was really getting the band back together. It was great. No, I said, you know, when you have an animated project that, uh, that, that, you, you know, that you're doing and you know, no matter what the budget is, it's always a, a lengthy process to get it done. And you said you made this over the pandemic. How long did it did production take for this? We worked hard. We worked fast, and and um, Matt and I always write pretty quickly. And that that stuff that we don't belabor it. I think we have a process that we he and I have honed over you know 20 years i mean we started working together on space ghost in 96 or 97 and we just i think we sort of finish each other's thoughts we come from different places but i think we really sort of make each other laugh and you know so we we sat down and we you know in some ways the idea of the movie is conventional but it's never going to be conventional when it's sort of in this Aqua Teen universe and we sort of hang our weirdness onto it. And, uh, and then we have a bunch of people, everybody sort of knows their place. It's not micromanaged. There aren't too many cooks. It's like, it's right. You know, everybody knows how to do their thing. And, and, uh, I, I'm not sure how long it took us, but it, it, we worked hard on it, but we did it in about a year. You know, we have a very sort of simple animation style and, and, uh, so, you know, it's not Pixar, uh, for better <laughs> and for worse, but, uh, you know, we're proud of it. It looks great too. You know, Bento Box Atlanta did an awesome job with it. Yeah. Def you know, I noticed that, uh, it definitely looks a little more slick. It didn't, uh, you know, it definitely went, it looks like you, you were able to do more animation than what you usually do on the show. So it, it looks like oh, we it never had, we never had money. I mean, the only reason Frylock floats is because we couldn't afford a walk cycle <laughs> i mean seriously we, we wanted, uh, you know we were like we can only afford to have him change into a hot dog or an igloo so maybe that'll just be his personality that's all he can do <laughs> that's all he can think of but it, it was all born out of i think the look and the aesthetic was always us trying to do fantasia with um you know, with a five dollar budget. But you know something, you are something that I always tell people when it comes to animation. Uh, again, you know your your projects have gone on for years, man. You have a huge fan base with these that keep them going so long. I've always told people it's not the animation that is the you know. It, I mean, for some things, yeah, but it's, it's a lot of times it's not the animation that's that's that is the key. It is the idea, the characters, the story, the you know, the way you're getting across things, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, yeah. I, I, mean, I never understood when people would say, you know, they have those round of stories when Adult Swim first came out. Like, adults are watching animation. I'm like, of course they are. It's just comedy, you know? It's comedy just done in a different way. I mean, you know, anime is different, obviously, but but it's it's just comedy in a different, uh, in a different vehicle. Yeah, no, I've seen so many projects that students have done animation students and they always concentrate on the look and a lot of those ideas are just you know they're not funny they're not good you know so yeah it's a, it's a great lesson to hear especially from somebody as yourself that you know the success often lies with the idea and uh the the, the, the characters it's not always the animation you know I, I want to talk to you about your career also and because uh, you've had an amazing career with adult swim cartoon network and uh you know i read somewhere and I often read things and get them wrong, but I read that. So you submitted uh, a letter of recommendation to 
to uh, uh, Ghost Planet Industries back in 1995, and it was submitted in crayon, like a kid had wrote it, <laughs> and they were, yeah. thinking, and then they were like, okay, this is the kind of thing that we're looking for, this kind of sense of humor. So is that true? Yeah, yeah. I had my sister's uh, student write it, <laughs> and he, you know, he said, "My name's Robert. I am eight years old." Uh, I like cars. Uh, Dave Willis exhibits a professionalism which I find profound in this day and age. I recommend him without reservation, Robert. And uh, all these cars, and he just did his own thing on it. But, you know, I'd also, like, worked on a billion shoots at that point. You know, I'd done everything. I carried C stands and, you know, and, and worked on every rap music video and corporate video and Falcons training camp and every everything under the sun at that point. So I felt like I had the chops to, <laughs> to work as a PA, but, uh, but you know, and I didn't know anything about Space Ghost, so my parents didn't have cable. And uh, they handed me these tapes. Uh, Andy Merrill, who hired me, handed me these tapes at of Space Ghost, and I watched him and rewatched him and rewatched him, and was like, I cannot believe how lucky I am to have been hired here. I, this was like, this was where I needed to be. This is where I was supposed to be. Um, and I only fell in Andy's lap because uh, I had met with someone at Cartoon Network. They had hooked me up with Matt Thompson. You know who went on to who has gone on to start Floyd County Productions and uh, you know one of the EPs of Archer, um, and he connected me to Andy, who was Brack and one of the original creators of Space Ghost. And I, you know, it just goes to show it's like you keep knocking on the door, and the more you knock, the luckier you get. But yeah, I mean, total. Total, total stroke of luck. And right in my backyard in Atlanta, it was just, it worked out so great for me. Oh, um, man. The, you, so that's, that, you got the dream job right there. Yeah, and then I met, I met Matt. Um, I got brought in on Space Ghost and put with Matt like a year and a half later. And we just clicked and made each other laugh. And uh, yeah, and the rest is history. You know, I got to ask real quick. Uh, you say you worked on every rap video out there. Any any particular rap video that we would know? No. no. <laughs> I've lo and I've looked for them, too. Uh, this was, uh, well, I mean, one, I just, I spent like 12 hours one, just throwing leaves into a fan. <laughs> Dead leaves into a fan. Uh, and then the next day I spent... The whole day uh, raking up dead leaves inside of uh, inside of some club. I I can't. Yeah, yeah. I know. I no, nothing cool. I like that nothing. was a that was a when I asked you that was a quick no no nothing you heard of, no. <laughs> oh no no yeah yeah missed the window on that. <laughs> um, you know, go, I, I was showing a little bit of Space Ghost Coast to Coast, and you probably saw a glimpse. On the still that I showed, you probably saw a glimpse of some of the characters that resemble Aqua Teen Hunger Force, but they're not the Aqua Teen Hunger Force we know today. So Aqua Teen Hunger Force, for those who don't know, is actually, and correct me if I'm wrong, is actually a spinoff of Space Ghost Coast to Coast. And at that time, they were very, they were very different looking. Is this, this right? Sort of. Yes, yeah, sort of. It was, um, when we were writing Space Ghost, we we wrote this episode called Aqua Teen Hunger Force where Space Ghost had bought uh, uh, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of hamburgers to build a fort out of, <laughs> and then he couldn't afford to pay for them. So the only way he could pay for them was to have this very conspicuous uh, product placement on his show. And so the original episode, Space Ghost didn't even have, he had one line and the Aqua Teens just take over the show. And our our boss wasn't didn't cra wasn't crazy about it because he was like, Space Ghost doesn't have any lines in this. <laughs> but we love those characters. And so we were like, we gotta do something with them. And then when 
Adult Swim started, we were encouraged to pitch something and we pitched Aqua Teen. And then years later, years later, we were like, we should make this the way we originally read it in the room. So Matt does this nerdy voice of Frylock. I'm doing the uh, Moon Knight voice uh, on uh, for Master Shake, basically. And, and Meatwad was even sort of sadder and more like aware. He was more like some John Carpenter, the thing kind of <laughs> gross amalgamation. He was always saying things like, please, God, kill me. <laughs> 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 and we had to, uh, so we made the show the way we had originally originally thought of it, but we made it years after we had already started making the show. Yeah, you might have, uh, if I give people a little uh, a little uh, example of what the characters sounded like, they they looked a little different. They sounded different back then. The personalities sure, were yeah. different. Uh, yeah, here's how they originally sounded and looked in that episode of Space Goes Coast to Coast. Aquatine Hunger Force, assemble! Frylock, the hunger hater, tater! Meatwad, ball of compressed meat! The burn is in your mind! And together we are Aquatine Aqua Hunger Force! <laughs> so, this is before Meatwad was dumb, this is before Frylock was black, you know, so... This is before, uh, uh, this, this is before, uh, uh, Master Shake was an asshole, you know, so this is... This is, they were very, very different at the time. And you gave the whole... Oh, Logan. Master Shake still was still an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's just it's a different. big asshole now. We never knew how he should sound, so we interviewed a guy. Um, briefly, Matt was like, what if you sounded like Christopher Walken? And we got a Christopher Walken impersonator. <laughs> he's like, I can't do a good Walken, but it's like... Uh, Fry Lock, uh, come forth. Um... <laughs> But, uh, yeah, and Matt, this is how we just read it in the room when we would write scripts. We would just read all the parts. So uh, the me wide voice always made Matt laugh, but it, like I feel like a lot of people were worried that no one would be able to understand it. But uh, we pressed forward with it. Yeah. Uh, and Shake, we were just, you know, we were just lucky to cross paths with Dana Snyder. <laughs> who just brought that incredible voice, which just had such, such a, um, such gravitas towards it. And then there was, um, uh, I always get Keith David and David Keith mixed up. Um, they're both actors, yeah. but, uh, but I think we thought of, you know, the guy from they live Keith David, Keith David. All right. Cause I've worked with David Keith too, but, uh, Keith David, I think we sort of thought of it. We kind of thought of that kind of voice for Frylock. And then someone had recently used Carrie Means in a promo across the street. And we brought him in and he just clicked immediately with the prop, with, with the, the script. And we had our cast. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's funny now, you know, you can't imagine them any different. Uh, you've been keeping up with these characters for years. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So you, you, you said that they approached you about doing uh, another Aqua Teen Hunger Force movie. The last movie was made in 2007. So you gave a little explanation how they came in and said they wanted to do another movie, but why 15 years later did they want to approach this again and do another film? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we didn't pitch it. We were like, I was sitting in a hammock in the backyard going, Oh my God, I gotta, how am I gonna get to the, how am I gonna get to the grocery store? Can I go there at midnight when there's no one around? I mean, it was like the heart of the pandemic, man. And I got a phone call from uh, Walter in development and he was like, how'd you guys like to make an Aqua Team movie? And I, you know, I, I mean, the, the practicality of the pandemic where nobody could shoot anything. Mm hmm. So let's make some animation. And oh, by the way, this is a property we own. We know the guys who make it. You know, they're low stress and they know what they're doing and they know what they want and they can do it quickly for a budget. I mean, it's kind of like a no brainer. Like I called, you know, Matt and Matt was was on board and everybody and then everybody working on it got on board and we just all 
all pulled it together. Uh, it's not a very interesting story, but but it was. It just clicked, you know. It just clicked. I mean, well, the, the the again, the cool thing about it is that you still, after so much time, have fans that want this. You know, that are waiting for this. You know, they'll and it'll. I'm pr- I imagine it'll be very successful when it comes out. So you know, again, uh, I always it, were like the first movie. I always thought after a while, I was like, it's a little too self indulgent. We maybe didn't know what we were doing. We were overworked on some other stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I always wanted that opportunity back. And this is was kind of that. And I think Matt and I both approached this like, let's sort of try to write a classic structure, three act kind of movie. And really, and the contract was like, yeah, we want a 70 minute movie. And I love that because I'm, I'm, I'm always looking at running times and I'm always like, like three hours. God, yeah, <laughs> I don't need four. I didn't, don't need 40 minutes of Seth Rogen's like ad libs <laughs> tacked into this. Like shorter is better, you know, in some ways. And, and, um, you know, and I also love the sort of uh, the texting thing in the movie. Like, I feel like that's something nobody's ever done. And yet everybody, I mean, if you're like me, you're watching something at TV, the first time it gets boring for you. I'm like, what's going on with my phone? Yeah. yeah. We've all got like the attention span of a gnat. So I was like, why don't we just embrace this? And we just, so we did this whole, we originally wrote a script where, your phone just blows up. I mean, <laughs> you get so many texts that your phone will probably overheat. You have to turn it off or put it in the other room. But our marketing department was like, this is cool. We can only do this. We can only afford to do this with for eight people. Yeah. You need to dial this back. <laughs> it's a great idea, um, though, man. I, yeah, I love it. I think it's consistent with the show. The Moon Knights are going to try to destroy your... Your movie watching experience, yeah, by blowing that, up your, by blowing up your celly, <laughs> and the people don't know the Moon and Nights. There they are, right there. Um, you know, you also created Squidbillies, and Squidbillies. It, for those who haven't seen Squidbillies, it's a it's about a, a a redneck family of squids who's who are led by. The lead character of Early, and Early, the way to describe him is uh, most likely racist, uh, ignorant, and often very violent, uh, but also very funny. And, you know, there's certain things that went along with this character. I'm going to show people a little bit of Squid Billies because I love the character of Early. I, I consider Early like our Archie Bunker for today, man. And Yes, I think, uh, you know, Jim, Jim Fortier, who I... And I wouldn't even say, like, we created the show. I mean, I think it sort of came out of a stew of a bunch of uh, Adult Swim writers and producers, Mm -hmm. although Jim and I were the primary driving force from the pilot going on forward. But, um, yeah, Jim always said, yeah, this is an Archie Bunker type of situation, you know. That's how we viewed it. Yeah, it's very funny. It's also, but, you know, it's funny that the the character became problematic in real life now here's a here's a a, a clip from squid billies of of early being early who as i said is often very violent ignorant and can be sexual sometimes you know he uh this is a clip where he sexually harasses a, a copying machine what is the deal with that Step aside, glenn you got a era 43 replaced toner cartridge oh my looks like the magenta damn this is going to hurt Stand clear! Hurry now! Hurry! Take that their sexual harassment manual and hit me in the groin! <laughs> now, between scented food mascots and, and, and races and sexually perverted uh, uh, hillbilly squids, uh, man, what, you know, I gotta ask, where the hell are you getting these ideas from? You know, how's your mind working? You know, where, how do you put these things together? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I think we all have, you know, Adult Swim sort of came out of a bunch of sort of very funny, sophisticated, you know, it came from Mike Lazo on down, really. 
I mean, the people in the programming department were like Kaki Jones, Ann Susan Brown, Andy Merrill. I mean, they got hired for some other reason to deal with these Hanna-Barbera cartoons, but they were brilliant, super crazy, funny people. Um, and it was just sort of a small, very specific point of view. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I feel like I was just one link in a in a in a chain coming out of William Street uh, of uh, you know just really trying to come up with something that you don't see elsewhere on TV, mm -hmm. and that was always you know people either laugh because they because uh, they know exactly what's coming next or they laugh because they have no idea what's coming next. And we were always urged to be the latter um, by, you know, Lazo it was just like, I don't, I've seen this before, you know, and everybody else wants you to say, I've, I've seen this before, make more of that. Mm -hmm. And he was always, I've seen this before. I'm going to throw your script dramatically across the room and embarrass you <laughs> until you bring me something that I haven't seen before. I think it was good training. You know, that's, that's, that's great that you said that because this whole thing of I, I haven't seen that before, I think it often people don't appreciate that enough, including myself. If I can just be, if I can be completely honest with you, man, uh, the first time I saw Aqua Teen Hunger Force, uh, was that a was at a friend's house who pretty much forced us to sit down and watch it because we were we were we were spending the weekend at his home, and he says you know you got to watch this and he's kind of ADD anyway so we 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 watched this and when I and this is the movie here but you know this is not the old Aquatine uh, Hunger Force but the, well, we watched old episodes and when I watched that I I hated it man I said what the hell is this I said this makes no sense. Once again, adults women are just being weird to be weird. All these stoners and making these cartoons. And, and then, you know, it, but that's because it was just so different and it was so crazy. And then I get home and I watch Adult Swim anyway. And I get home and it comes on and I get ready to change the channel, but I can't. And I'm watching this. And from that day, I, it just took a while to sink in, man. I was, I was hooked on this and I was like, Jesus, that guy was right. This is actually this is great, and I've and I loved the show ever since. Uh, that and and Squid Billies, uh, this whole thing of doing something different, taking ideas that just don't make any sense together and making them work is a, is a thing that works great. You know, it makes me want to ask you, what is your what is what is the influence for your sense of humor? Uh, there's that's a complicated question. I mean, because you know, a lot of times I just watch uh, drama. There's not a whole lot of comedy that. <laughs> Um, but, uh, I mean, the influence, you know, some of it is super generic, like Simpsons, obviously greatest TV show in history. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I watched SNL like right when it, at an early age, even before I knew what it was, you know, I mean, Mad Magazine, um, you know, with Aqua Teen. I was never a horror buff. M Matt Malero just brought this whole horror aspect to it where I feel like he influenced it hugely in that direction enough to a point where at a certain point I I started thinking in the horror universe, the horror, <laughs> the mix of horror and comedy, the shock, just the shock that makes you laugh, you know, the, the thing that you've never seen before. Um, uh, so I don't know, you know, and Steve Martin, the silliness of Steve Martin stand up and, and, uh, the silly, you know, that you didn't see as much you, in comedy. You, you, you always, always see stuff that it's very clever and mm -hmm. very writerly, but not just the pure silliness and stupidity that, you know, not many shows dare to embrace yeah <laughs> hey i was talking to him earlier when we were talking about squid billies i mentioned that the character later became problematic this is a sort of probably a touchy subject here but the voice of very no, that's all right okay well, well then i now that I, I feel a little bit better about going into this uh the the the, the character of early i thought was voiced incredibly by 
Stuart Baker, who's also a musician known as uh, Unknown Henson. Uh, and guy, has, you know, he's a, he's a great personality, great voice, uh, but also, like many people, went online and said what many considered to be some offensive things, uh, in particular about Black Lives Matter and Dolly Parton. And yeah. so he was removed from the show, but he said later on, I mean, he went off. Here's a, an, an article where you can go and look at these yourself, but he b made a bunch of tweets where it was pretty much a rant. And he was also accusing, sound like he was accusing you guys over at Adult Swim and the creators of the show of ruining his life after the firing. Uh, now, did you have anything to do with the firing and were you in the middle of that at all? And what are your you know, thoughts on the whole situation? I mean, we, Jim and I were aware of little stuff here and there, and it kind of got to a point where you couldn't, you couldn't ignore it, you know, and um, Danny's of an older, a little bit older generation that doesn't really understand uh, social media. He also doesn't, didn't really understand how it reflects upon us and our TV show and how we are about the world. And uh, so I think we immediately were like, this is indefensible. And that's a big deal. You know, other shows have had other voice actors that have done or said something, you know, and they, whatever, they discipline or whatever. And, and uh, but we, we fired him right away and i feel like not to congratulate ourselves on being so uh progressive but you know that's a big deal pressing the button to explode your tv show a tv show that's been on the air for a long time and i will say i love danny and i think danny is unbelievably talented and it hurt us to do that but but we couldn't abide by it and um you know and i did think it working with Tracy Morgan in the final season was a, a funny and adult swim way to <laughs> completely blow people's minds, you know, <laughs> and he's the, he's a voice that you hear and it makes you laugh immediately. And, uh, and it was Jim's suggestion to use Tracy. And I, I think I was certainly like, yeah, that's exciting and that's fun. It was fun to work with him, and uh, you know it's it's uh, it's sad. But I also think, you know, Danny is sort of at the end of his career, anyways. You know, for us to I don't, I don't think that's probably accurate to say that we, you know, ruined ruined his life. And I, you know, I still still love the guy and I still think he's very talented. But I, but you know. We're, you can't abide by that. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I hear you. You keep saying Danny because I know Unknown Henson and oh, Stuart that's a, Baker. Yeah, Stuart Daniel Baker. So, okay, okay. Got gotcha, you. Got gotcha. Stuart D. Baker. Okay. All right. Yeah, I did not know that. I, I thank God. I thought I had the name completely wrong at first. So, um, well, you know, we're about to wind things down here. But another co-creation of yours is the show your pretty face is going to hell i and i'll be honest with you man I, I i don't know why maybe i'm just not paying attention but i did not know for the longest time that that was a a co-creation of yours i was just watching the show and just enjoying it man and uh, you know right. another thing about this show and here's a little bit of the show right here it's so it's a little bit different from what you were doing before uh because it was a live action show and i, I actually thought it was a great idea it's Imagine hell as a corporate entity, and all of the, all the all, all of the underlings work in cubicles, and, and some people would say that is hell. But you know, it's, so it's a great metaphor for, you know, pretty much corporate America or, or you know, um, uh, working class life. I won't lie, being in hell isn't the easiest existence. Are the days long? Yeah. Oh, good. Shane's here. Yeah. Is the work hard? You better believe it. At least we're not in the stalls. That's when things get ugly. But ask me this, would I trade the experience of being a tortured soul in the depths of hell for anything in the world? Christy Ow. Ow. I would love to trade it. <laughs> you know, this, 
I, 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 the, again, the longevity of your shows are amazing, man. I, I, when I was looking up this show, I saw that this was nine years ago. And I was like, wow, that... I didn't even recognize the time. I didn't feel the time. It feels like this show just came on a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but a couple of things I want to ask you about this show. Again, this is a live action show. And we've been talking about your animated shows for a while. Uh, this will also be uh, an animated show this year, I believe. And Yeah, we came out with the sh uh, shorts on the Adult Swim YouTube like a week ago. We just dropped them. Okay, so is that, that, what, what was the reason for the switch to, uh, to animation then? Well, we, know, we always wanted to make the show live action initially, even though our sensibility is more cartoon. We just thought it was funnier to kind of have the, you know, everyone sprayed red. And, <laughs> you know, it's just, it almost seems like there's a, there's a deeper level to the hell seeing these actors in. And just fully painted red, but uh, um, but you know, I mean, an devils and demons have been animated throughout, you know, throughout, and you've seen that before. And but the way we did it, you hadn't. But now, at this point, once we've established the show and the characters, we we're going to we wrote a finale for a, a thirty minute finale for the series and. COVID hit and it was just, you couldn't afford to shoot the finale that we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But then the network was like, hey, you want to make some animated shorts? So that's what we did. So we dropped eight of them and um, we love them. We think they turned out well and uh, they're very funny. And uh, uh, I think the characters sustain is this animated. And certainly there are, are things that like I ran into our makeup artist recently who had seen them and he was like, there's one episode where it's a human centipede done as a circle. <laughs> like the, the final, the, the, the lead head is shoved in the final ass making a, a circle. And uh, our makeup and effects artist was like, I am, uh, I'm glad you decided to do that animated and not live action. That would have been... Difficult to execute, if not impossible. So, <laughs> we, uh, yeah, yeah, we love them though. They're great. I, on the other hand, am sorry you did not do that in live action. I would have loved to have seen how that would have been. Um, yes, hard, you... hard. That that rig would have would have taken some time to set up. I think. Uh, having worked both in animation and live action, uh, did you did, did did you enjoy working in live action? Oh, I loved it. I mean, I started my career in animation, so, or I, I mean, I started my career in live action, just lugging C stands and whatever. But, uh, but after your pretty face was a way for Casper Kelly and I to sort of learn how to direct. Mm -hmm. And we always wanted to, you know, and this seemed like this is a show that was very adult swim like, you know, just absurd, our absurdity and, surrealism and and uh and yet we could shoot it on a green screen we shot it in this warehouse way out on fulton industrial and just uh just on a tight budget and we and i think we sort of approached it like well we're just going to spend every penny of the budget and the aesthetic will be we'll we'll just finally hit the ceiling of our budget <laughs> you don't we'll see what it looks like and uh but yeah we're thrilled with them i mean they're out on hbo max and we think they're super funny, and and um, and the new the new animations are on uh, Adult Swim YouTube. So, I, I mean, I, I gotta tell you the the what you did with the live action with the budget that you had, I thought I think you did an amazing job with that, man. Uh, you Thank know, you. Yeah, 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 very effective. Yeah, our effects team did a great job. You know, it, I mean, it's it's insane. <laughs> it's insane. We have a a couple just horror geniuses. That did all the makeup, like Shane Morton and, and Chris Chris Brown did just all the makeup and all the effects stuff. It it was it was really a labor of love for everybody. Nice, nice. You, do you want to do uh, any more live action? Do you want to do a live action movie? You want to work for you know? Oh, you know? oh, are you kidding? I would love to. Oh my God. Oh yes. Do I? Do you have a script? I can get one Send to me. Something. <laughs> I would love to. I got I finally got okay at this. It took me a while, but I uh, I got to a point where I was doing it, and 
you know, and Chris has done a little bit more. He did, uh, of course, he did Too Many Cooks, and he's um, he's got a project coming out for Adult Swim at the end of the year um, that I'm real excited about for him. And um, but yeah, oh yeah, uh, absolutely, would love, love, love to direct more stuff. Well, I look forward to that, whatever that project may be, whenever it'll happen. But hey, you know what, I. Really do appreciate you doing the interview. It's been a great discussion, man. You know, it's been, uh, and again, for something that I, that I love, uh, hearing some of the backstories and you telling me about some of the, you know, some of the controversial things that have happened and just talking about your process. It's been, it's yeah. been great. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So once again, y'all, the project that Dave has coming out now, the movie that he has coming out now is Aqua Teen Hunger Force Plantasm. This is coming out on November 8th very soon and it'll be out on home video blu-ray and all that good stuff so check it out if you love aqua Teen hunger force as much as i do and again dave thank you very much man thank you see you later appreciate it and there he goes on internet for everybody that right there oh <sighs> sigh of relief deep breath always going to these kind of nervous and then when it's done, I'm always happy, very happy that it went as smooth as it does. And that's because uh, those guys are great. You know, so many great interviews that I've had with so many interesting people who have so many great things to tell me about the stuff that I love. And again, all that is because of you out there. So because of you, I've been able to talk to so many, so many different people, so many different personalities, so many different talents. As I said, anywhere from actors, directors, animators, online personalities, influencers, tech people, scientists. I've talked to so many people out there and as I said that is because of you. Let me go ahead and tell you where to go so that you can see some of these interviews. I should always have this ready and I never, I never ever do. Uh, Miss Pixie's down here. I had to Put her down because I had to cut off the. Oh, come here, girl. I had to cut off, cut off the uh, the Zoom call. But let me take you over to our interview page. And you honestly, uh, you can hear it starting right there. But let me go back here. So there you go, folks. It is double toasted interviews. That is the page you go to. I don't push it a whole lot because. I don't know why, because I guess we don't do a whole lot of these every week. You know, we get these interviews when we can. And that's because of our producer, Kevin King. I want to thank him very much for getting these interviews and getting these people to come on and talk to us. So as you can see, we have a lot of great interviews here. Please check it out. You'll learn a lot from these. These uh, are very, very evergreen, these interviews. I mean, we're talking about probably their most recent projects, but they talk about things that I'm telling you, very educational. So, again, thank you, all of you out there. I'm Corey Coleman, and I'm going to see you on the next one, whether that is a, uh, an interview or a show or whatever we're doing. You know, I always love hanging out with you. I always love coming here and cutting on this stream and these cameras and hanging out with you, and I will see you very soon. Until then, until then, don't you ever, 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 ever hesitate to call me, well, at least email me, and you can do that by emailing kcoolmans at gmail.com that is k-c-o-o-l-m-a-n-z at gmail.com and you email us with any kind of questions comments compliments insults input and our advice hit us up on our social medias instagram twitter facebook our tiktok is blowing up it's not there but you can find us also patreon just type in double toasted it'll take you where you need to go also if you find yourself here in austin texas as many of you have Please do not hesitate to try to reach out to us. Let us know ahead of time, though. Kcoolmans at gmail.com. Let us know if you're moving here to lovely Austin, Texas, or you're just passing through. Whatever you're doing, we would love, love, love to hang out with you. All right, everybody, that is it. Again, thank you so much for giving me these opportunities to come in and do these interviews and everything that we do. So until next time. Good night, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you are listening to or you just happen to be watching this, goodbye and stay toasty.